certainly, no matter how inflated was my self-regard as a midshipman, it could never have admitted the prospect that I would someday return to the banks of the Severn as a candidate for President of the United States. My old company officer, who for four years devoted himself to tracking my nocturnal sojourns outside the walls of the academy, and my other petty acts of insubordination would have certainly shared my skepticism. But in the intervening years and experiences, I have learned what a young man seldom appreciates, that life is rich with irony and unexpected twists of fate, and it's all the more fascinating for them. And I learned this too, that my accomplishments are more a testament to my country, a land of opportunity, than they are to me. In America, everything is possible. I had a difficult time my plebe year adjusting to the discipline imposed on me, which included, of course, deference to officers and instructors, but to other midshipmen whose only accomplishment entitling them to my obedience, I thought at the time, was to have been born a year or more before me. I was something of a discipline problem to begin with. The problem being, I didn't like discipline. And that childish impulse that seemed then so important to my self-respect, to protecting the individualism I had been at pains to assert throughout my intenerent childhood, encouraged my irreverence to some of the customs of this place. It's funny now, how less self-assured I feel later in life than I did when I lived in the perpetual springtime of youth. Some of my critics allege that age hasn't entirely cost me my earlier conceits. All I can say to them, they should have known me then. 